Right, hi there YouTube and uh, good to see you all again. It's time for another video. Now, what I have over on the bench just here is a Asus A... No, it's not. It's an F552C. And all that I know on this one is if I get the machine here. Yes, I've got it. I've already unscrewed all of this guy, so it's likely to fall apart in my hands. Um, so, yes, it's an Asus, an F552C, and all it has on the ticket uh, from our sales consultant, it just says no warranty, it's fucked. It's written right there. Uh, so it just says it's slow running. Now, what we'll do is we will go over onto the bench right now and we'll have a look and see what we make of it. Be strong. Be strong. Right, okay, so we're over on the bench and we've got our Asus F55 to see here uh, what we'll do is we'll move the camera up a little bit that's a bit better you can see it a lot more clearly now and the problem with this guy is that it's running slow so what i've already done is i've already unscrewed this thing so it comes apart a lot easier now, I know some IT guys are not a big fan of straight away going in for that, but I like to, and the reason why is if it's going in for a full service and the customer is paying for a full service, hypothetically speaking, then they're going to want to expect a full service. And that will mean stripping it down and cleaning it out. Now, this also saves you a lot of time in the long run um, because if all of the checks come back okay, which they haven't in this case, it's the hard drive that's faulty, but if all checks were to have come back okay, then you're still going to have to go into the machine anyway and potentially investigate the problem further. So as you see... We've got a spinning donut icon, and this thing is indeed slow. <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll give that a moment to boot up. And then we'll see what we can do to make some improvements to this. Because that is unacceptably slow. Even if the machine is an i3 running 4 gig of RAM... That is still painfully slow. So we'll just give that moment. And as you see, what we have is our administrator's welcome screen. Okay, so my thought process is, at this point, what it would be, is okay what we'll need to do then is if the customer was complaining that the machine was running like this in this condition i would be thinking right is there anything in the file system that's slowing this guy down does it have malware does it have viruses root kits or any sort of tool on it is that slowing it down is the hard drive junked up um, is it close to its full capacity? All of that good stuff. All right. And I'd be looking at doing a mandatory backup anyway of all of the important data and files and information on that drive. That would mean calling the customer in to sit down and go over exactly what they want kept and what they don't. So that's my thought process at the moment, if this was a customer's machine. Yes, okay, it's a little bit more labour intensive. And uh, it does require a little bit more work. But the end results are well worth it. 
So we'll just give this a moment anyway, just to see uh, what happens here, because, yeah, uh, this is slow. The hard drive does appear to be making noises. I can hear it whirring and occasionally clicking um, as as it would expect. Well, it's not a click. It's more of just generic hard drive sounds. But it appears to be working at this stage. It hasn't thrown any errors. This is just the first run anyway to give you some idea of how slow this thing actually is. So this is sort of showing you the fault. Now I thought I'd had this corrected. So this is what makes me think that it is the hard drive because everything else I've done and I will show you that. So we'll just give this an extra couple of moments just to finish booting up. But as I said, for an i3 processor with a 500 gig hard drive and 4 gig RAM, this has taken nearly four minutes to load. That's crazy. Yeah, I definitely think it is hard drive at this point. While we're just on this note about the machine anyway, it is worth noting that it can be upgraded. But there's only one RAM slot on this to upgrade it. Um, I'm not going to go through all the hassle again of removing the additional screws to show you under the logic board in this video but that is something that we can look at in another video but yes the machine indeed can be upgraded but there's only enough space for one ram slot so let's just continue to give this a moment anyway yeah this this is a really not a happy machine. This video might be longer than I expected, by the way. But that's fine. It just gives you an idea of exactly how slow slow can really be. And it looks like it's time to go shopping for a new solid state drive. I think even then the title of this video might end up changing to uh, really, 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 really slow Asus F552C. <laughs> My goodness. If we don't get anything in a moment, what we'll do is we'll upgrade it anyway. And I'll show you what I also did with inside the machine. As I'm just finishing off my cigarette. Okay, so that's eight minutes so far of not an awful lot. Let's see if Windows does actually boot on this. So this is all in real time.
No editing in any of this. Okay, right, I'm getting a little bit sick of this now, of this waiting. So what we'll do is I'm just going to hard power it off, like so. Which shouldn't really do. Then what we'll do is we'll just close the lid on that. Oh, as I'm kicking the tripod over. Right here, spin this round so you can see it. Right there is another RAM slot. Now, I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack in the comments section about doing this, about installing RAM uh, with a battery still plugged in in case you get a power surge on it. While this is possible, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway purely because it's not a customer's machine, it's mine, so I can do pretty much what the hell I want. But yes, indeed, it would be good practice to remove the battery first. In this instance, I'm not going to. By the way, the hard drive's here. This guy will be getting pulled out um, at some point anyway, because I'm going to have to replace it with a solid state, which means... I can't do that in this video in any event because I don't have one to hand. So I'm going to have to go shopping for one later. So what we'll do is let's see if that additional 2 gig of RAM has done anything. So we'll power the machine back up. It might actually, just before we do this, it might actually be worth going into the BIOS and having a look to see if um, there's anything that can be uh, telling us about the status of our hard drive here. So I'm now in the system BIOS by uh, contiguously pressing F2 and delete. And we're going to have a quick look and see... Uh, it's not throwing up any smart errors there. So the boot options are all right. Uh, we don't need to worry about security. Yeah, the hard drive seems to say that it's fine. There's no indication that smart has failed. So nothing on there, but I'm pretty sure that the hard drive is on its way out. Now, further spoiler alert, this has a brand new version of Windows put on it. So we know for a fact that it's not Windows itself, because the first thing I did when I acquired the machine was to reinstall Windows anyway in the hope that would have fixed it. So we'll just quit this without saving and we will reboot. Got our spinning donut icon, so it appears to be doing something. Let's see if an additional two gig of RAM has helped us in any sort of way. So you see with these real-time videos, it's good because, I mean, I know a lot of people want to skip through the content quickly. But real-time video is good because they show you exactly uh, the level of work and detail that's involved. That's why I prefer watching these videos in full. And so should you. And as we see, this seems to be running a little bit quicker with an additional 2 gig of RAM in there. 
So we'll just give this a moment. But even still, that is painfully slow. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, what else can we do? And I will walk you through that in just a moment. But alert, you might want to get yourself a spare toothbrush. And a screwdriver. Right, Windows has indeed this time loaded up. Uh, that was a little bit quicker with an additional 2 gig of RAM. But that is still slow. As you see. So I'm now thinking it's definitely hard drive. Yeah, that's... There's a little bit of jitter on there when I do that. Let's see if Notepad opens up. That should have opened by now. And all we've got next to our mouse cursor is spinning donut icon. Notepad++ opens fine, but that took a while. Let's open up Google. Oh, we've opened that twice and it's still running slow. OK. Right. Well, we've got somewhere by upgrading it. Now, that's all well and good. But <coughs> if this was a customer's machine, just simply an upgrade well, it wouldn't really be good enough because at the end of the day, um, if the customer wasn't complaining about the machine before, when they had it, we've gone through all of the other processes such as checking file system, making sure there's no malware, making sure there's no <coughs> rootkits or tools, and that the file system itself and Windows is all right then there shouldn't really be any need to add the additional RAM because it was running fine before. So already we can see by this that is the hard drive that's on its way. But we did say that this is a full service. So what we're going to now do, <coughs> we're going to power the machine off again. So this will shut down. And I've already got this machine open in any event. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and physically, we might need to remove the power cord, and physically actually open this guy up, if I can, without belting the tripod over again. Now, as I said, I've already removed the screws on this. So, um, yeah, that saved a little bit of time. Now, what I, what, what I did do is over here, you see the fan. I cleaned all that out. Now, I can show you how to do this. It's quite simple. So what we'll do is we'll lift this up. And we'll need something to stick under here, like so, to hold that up. And then it's just a case of undoing all these ribbon connectors. I'm going to have to drop the tripod for this, so you can see inside. So there we are, that only just took a few moments just to adjust that tripod. And as you can see, what I need to do now is disconnect these ribbons. Now, I'm going to have to try and do this with a tripod in between my legs. And I can assure you, this is not going to be easy. So what I have here anyway is a screwdriver uh, that's holding this top lid up. So I can simply get in there 
and disconnect all these ribbons. And then the keyboard can just simply come up like so. That's fine. Now what we're going to want to do is this fan here, this is where you'll need your trusty toothbrush. You're just going to want to go in there and start brushing that out in case that's a reason. Now, spoiler alert, I've already done all this. You might elect as well. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws here that will need to be removed. Again, I've already done this and I'm not going to do it again in this video, but you may wish to remove that and actually remove the logic board as well and clean underneath uh, that as well with your trusty toothbrush. No need to be using any chemicals on it. You don't need to. Just simply the toothbrush will do fine. You're sweeping out all the dirt and debris that might be under there and making sure that the copper tracking to your fan is all free and clear of any dust and grime because that could be causing uh, the machine to run hot and therefore slow down. But we're happy with this. So what we can go ahead and do is put all this back This might take a while. So we'll go ahead and put all this back and um, yeah, we'll go from there. These ribbons are awfully finicky. In my trusty screwdriver again just to hold that up we plug this guy back in right now we've got those back in what we're going to do is before we close this up properly I'm going to chuck the power cable back in and I'm going to fire the machine up the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that those ribbon connectors are put back in properly. Because you don't want to do that, seal it all back up again and then find that you've missed something. So we just give this a moment to boot. Trackpad's working for now. Let's just give this a moment. Yeah, it's definitely the hard drive that is at fault here. That's what's slowing it down. This thing now has six gig of RAM in it. We have our welcome screen again. Just give this a moment. Okay, Windows has loaded. Now what we'll do is we will open up Notepad. Left click on that. Then we're going to test our keyboards working. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Yeah. Minus equals. That appears to be working. Qwerty UIOP. Yeah, that's working. Enter key. Yeah. ASDFGH. 
JKL. Yeah, that's working. ZXCV Bravo November Mike. Yeah, that's working. Caps lock's working. The tab key works. Right, so the keyboard's all fine. So now what we can go ahead and do is simply press snap that all together. Might as well hard power down that because the hard drive is actually goosed anyway so just hard power that down close the lid and we'll just press all of this together like so And then we can go ahead and put the screws back in that hold that guy together. But before I do any of that, it will be a case of having to replace this guy. So, as I said, I don't have one to hand at the moment. Um, so uh, that is as far as really I can go with this. So what I will need to do is go shopping for another hard drive or acquire one from somewhere. And what we'll then do is we will have a an, another revisit on this and see if that has made any improvements. I suppose what I can do in the meantime, for now, I could run some hard drive diagnostic tools on it. <coughs> that will mean me needing to dig those out and find them. So it should be under high runs if I've got that. Oh, the joys. And I do. I've got high runs boot. DVD, well not DVD, boot USB that. So what we can try is before I do stick this thing all back together, we can try that. Just to confirm that the hard drive is indeed on its way, which I'm pretty sure by now it is because we've upgraded this, cleaned it all out on the inside, I've inspected it as well for any potential broken components and couldn't find any. So at this stage, it is looking like the hard drive's on its way. Let's see if this boots up. It might not. I really should have prepped this uh, before making this trash heap of a video. But yeah, as we see here, 6 gig of RAM, so it's picked the RAM up and it's still running slow. Right, that's what we need to go into. So we'll go here, boot from that sand disk, save changes and exit, yeah. There's loading files. This usually does take quite a while. Although it is beginning to make me wonder if there is something else going on here. Because it should be a little bit quicker than that. 
This might well be a revisit at some stage. Let's just move that tripod right quick. Okay, so I've moved it. It's still loading up. It's not much to go. And then we'll find out if this uh, hard drive is throwing us any errors. That's if I've got the right tools here. Okay, it's just loading up Hirons now. Let's pause this for a few minutes. Okay. That pause was literally only about five seconds, by the way. Right, okay, so that's now loaded up. So we're going to go over to where it says Utilities and double-click that. We've got something called... Just close that. We're looking for hard disk drive tools, hard disk tools and I do believe it's going to be diagnostics and we can use any number of these so hard drive scan, let's go for that, that seems to be a good one Okay, and then up here. Oh, it's not bringing up the hard drive now. Okay. That's interesting. So where's the hard drive gone? It's not recognising it. Let's try Crystal Disk Info. And it's saying hard drive is not found. Now that is interesting, I did not expect that. That is interesting. I know I shouldn't do this with a machine running, but I'm going to, all the same. And let's just check. Yeah. It's in there. It was pushed in okay. Oh, I must have um, jolted the power connection on that. So it's going to reboot. <coughs> Let's pause that because we don't really want to go through all that again. Okay, so after uh, that little episode, I think we might be in luck. It's now found the hard drive. That's awesome. So what we can do is we can click on Smart and find out its general health. And it seems to be okay. So this is strange. There's something else going on here. Um, that I'm not completely happy with. Let's do a read-write test on it. Um, read data to the host with seeks. We could do that. 
let's just do a verify and hit OK. See where we go with it. Definitely think that there is uh, some issue there. Even though that the general health information came back as okay, I still wouldn't rule out a bad drive at this stage. Oh goodness, this is going to take ages. Um, right. Yeah, that's 1%. Um, this might take quite a while. And I don't even know if it's worth sitting through all of that. But the purpose of the video is to give you some idea of what to do. And support that. Mm. Smart tests. Let's try that one. Short one. Oh, it's queued it, hasn't it? Let's just shut the whole program down and do it again. Right, okay. So, going to tools, smart tests. Oh, we need to select our hard drive first. Tools, smart test. Short. And we'll see what that does. It's twenty per cent done. That's 30. It says so right there. <coughs> it's 40. This is just to give us an idea if the drive is actually on its way. And I think it is. Even if these tests still come back okay, I'm probably just going to change the drive out in any event. It would just be a lot easier. I need to pick up a spare one in any way, so... Um, yeah, having a spare hard drive knocking around is always a good thing, but I'm going to elect for solid state. It's 80% done. That's 80, by the way, not 8%. So it's 80% done. All in real time, this, by the way. Only a couple of pauses. That's 90%. Let's click on this and stop the task. Okay, so it says it's finished. And let's pull up the health again. Still says it's okay. It's odd. 
Maybe there might be something else going on. We could do an extended test on this, but that could take hours. Um, tools. Features. Oh, it's running another test again. Yeah, I think basically we're probably going to just wait for this to do and then we'll leave it there and then proceed to close out with our conclusions. So we'll just give this a moment anyway and we'll shut the machine down, put it back together. Um, at least half together anyway and go from there let's just wait for the extra 50% to complete that's just for completeness that's 70% I don't really want to break its operation now might as well wait for it to finish. It's ninety. And it's finished, so we can just go ahead and close that down, remove our flash drive and put that back in its case. And start putting the machine together, I guess. So what we'll do is just remove the power cable, it seems to be a bit stiff, and we'll just shut this down, I'll just hard power that off, and close the lid, flip him over, I need to remove the battery. So we've got some screws in there. We'll start putting the back shell back on. like so see what I'm doing properly one that another one that
on the one hand. Another one there. And just one more to go in there. When I drop that screwdriver, ah, there it is. There's the screw. Thought I'd lost that. There we go. And then the rest of those three screws are for the hard drive. And that's what we should end up with. Now, as I said, I'm not going to bother putting the uh, closing panel on that because I've only got to remove this hard drive anyway, because I still think there is a problem with that. I'm still not entirely sure that that drive is well. Um, so, yeah, but I'm going to save that for closeout. So let's proceed now to our conclusions and finalise the video. So... There we are, that was the Asus F552C and that was just some generic fault finding there for you um, in real time of course and uh, what we can do about potentially speeding the laptop up. Now unfortunately, although the hard drive scan did say that the drive was okay, I'm still not entirely convinced. So what I am going to go ahead and do is swap that out for a solid state drive because they're more efficient and they're faster anyway and we'll see if that makes a difference. If it doesn't, then there's something else going on inside that machine <coughs> that will warrant further investigation. Now, as we said during the video, it can only be upgraded um, by one memory module. I do have another stick of 4 gig, so what I will go ahead and do is dump that in there anyway and see if that makes any blindest bit of difference. So we'll, we will see how that progresses. Unfortunately, without uh, having a spare SSD drive in stock, there's not an awful lot I can do at the moment about showing you um, at this stage that the machine is running. But I'm hopefully going to go and pick one up later today and we will come back to this and see how it gets on. But for now, lovely viewer, I thank you indeed for your patience during the video. I hope that you like this one. Sorry I've not put out more content more regularly, but I've been busy with university and other things side. But I do look forward to seeing you in the next video and it probably will be on that F552C to see how we get on. But in the meantime, wishing you all the very best with your endeavours, and I hope that you found this video somewhat useful, um, if anything. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.